What we're going to do in this, uh, in section two and section three of this lecture, is talk about some of the characteristics of innovation and entrepreneurship leadership. So I've broken this down into two sections. There's, there's actually um, 14 sort of characteristics that we would look for if we're going to drive innovation leadership in the organisation. And rather than sort of do it in a big block, I've got to look at um, seven characteristics in each block. So let's start with the first of these characteristics, which is the ability to formulate an innovation strategy. Okay, so one of the key things that a leader in the organisation needs to be able to do is to drive and oversee the process of developing strategy. Now strategy, as we know from our discussions last week, requires us to pull together people and resources from different parts of the organisations to be able to clearly set a um, group of objectives that the organisation is going to be able to try and achieve over the next um, period of time and then getting everyone in that mix to work towards achieving that particular set of objectives. And so one of the jobs that a leader has to do is engage in that process. They have to drive it. They have to um, encourage people to participate and engage. One of the ways they can do this is by um, leading the discussion, by having their own thoughts and visions about where the organisation should go, but also directly being open to other people having their ideas and visions about what the future might look like. Another powerful levy that um, leaders have in the formulation of innovation strategy, strategy is using their command of organisational resources and deploying those resources carefully to the areas where innovation is needed and can occur. If you want to send a really clear signal to the organisation that you're serious about entrepreneurial and innovative behaviour, then you give that area a significant budget line and organisational resources to support those activities. If you don't want to be seen as serious in that space, then you might say you want to do innovation, but you don't actually fund that particular activity. So the innovation leader is basically responsible for the development and delivery of the innovation strategy and its outcomes. They mightn't do all of the nitty gritty of that, but it's really their role to drive and to guide and to oversee that process and to make sure it happens. Organisations that don't have someone driving that strategy will fail to have a strategy. And certainly, one of the key things they've got to think about is which products or product offerings are we going to offer and what value are we trying to provide for our customer base. A second thing we need to talk about um, and look at in terms of characteristics that are linked to driving innovation and entrepreneurship is again this ability to influence and inspire. You know, again, leadership is a personal and personality based characteristic. And really what a leader is doing is trying to model the behaviours of other, others. And so really, if they're going to do that, they have to be able to um, have characteristics that will really influence, and people, uh, influence people and inspire them to pursue the organisation's strategy and objectives. So what do we mean by that? Well, part of what they need is the skills of persuasion. Okay? It's really important that you're able to persuade and convince people to work with you rather than against you. Um, organisations don't come easily to a consensus. There's lots of different power bases and lots of different perspectives. And what a leader is really trying to do is use their skills of negotiation and persuasion to get people who hold quite different views to come together and to agree on where the organisation should go. If you're going to influence and inspire, inspire people, then you need to influence the shaping of key performance indicators. You need to set indicators that are very much linked to innovative and entrepreneurial behaviour, entrepreneurial and innovative behaviour within the organisation, and encourage people to work towards those objectives. You need to be able to argue for and influence the correct allocation of resources. As I mentioned on the previous slide, you know, if you want to starve innovation, then don't provide it with resources. You know, so your job is to be an advocate, is to drive the access to resources, and to let people see you doing that. Okay. Another critical skill along with that skill of persuasion is the ability to communicate. Strong and effective leaders have this natural ability to be able to communicate with everyone from the most senior levels of the organisation all the way down to the shop floor and to be able to work with those people and treat them with honesty and openness and respect in such a way that enables them and encourages them to work towards the organisation's objectives. 
A third characteristic we need is this need, um, this characteristic around determination and courage. Remember that when we engage in innovative and entrepreneurial behaviour, what we're really talking about is going into the unknown and doing something new or different that we haven't done before. And that tends to put people in a state of fear. People are uncertain, people um, lack confidence about what that future might look like. They have a lot of concerns about their own future and if this goes wrong, what will that mean for them as an organisation? And lots of people will put up barriers, okay, to you actually being able to innovate, to you actually being able to do something that is truly entrepreneurial within your organisation. And so if you're going to be constantly told no, if you're going to constantly have barriers put in your way, if you're going to constantly have to rage against the machine and, and fight with people to get the objectives that you want to achieve within the organisation, this really requires a fair degree of determination and courage. I'd, I'd probably refer to this more as the concept of resilience. You need to be really strong-willed, you need to be self-monitoring, you need to know that, um, be able to read your own signs and be able to know um, how you're travelling at any one point in time and have that determination and courage to see your ideas through to the end. Again, it's very easy in the face of significant barriers, both inside and outside of the organisation, to just give up, to say it's all too hard, I, I simply can't keep pushing this any longer. But just staying the course, championing the ideas that you have as an organisation, focusing on a series of small wins that build up towards a bigger win at the end of the time, is likely to be very successful in actually driving innovation and entrepreneurship within the organisation. So again, this personal characteristic around determination and courage is really critical um, to being able to drive entrepreneurship and innovation within the organisation. Another really important factor or characteristic that we need to see if we're going to have innovation and entrepreneurial leadership within the organisation is a strong emphasis on goal and performance orientation. Remember that when we talk about strategies, when we talk about entrepreneurial behaviour, we're really trying a bit focused on what our long-term objective is and how we're going to get to that objective as effectively as we possibly can. So people who are good at leadership have a really strong eye on what that long-term goal is. And in fact, that focus on that long-term goal, the understanding of the importance of that long-term goal, is often what helps to motivate them and give them the courage and determination to sustain their efforts in actually achieving those particular outcomes. So being strongly goal-oriented is likely, is likely to be linked to a fierce passion for innovation and a determination for success within entrepreneurs. And so, you know, these people, again, in the face of, comp of negative voices and competing evidence will drive their ideas forward in such a way that will enable them to achieve those particular objectives. Now, this doesn't mean that they don't stop and reflect from time to time. And in fact, one of the hallmarks of people who are goal and performance orientated is that they're constantly checking their performance, thinking about what they're doing, realigning their goals, pivoting slightly, you know, new and different ways to see whether they can overall achieve that long-term objective. And again, managers and leaders that have this strong goal orientation help to motivate the people around them to work towards that particular outcome. A fifth um, characteristic or feature we need to have in leaders who are going to drive innovation and entrepreneurship is an incredibly strong customer orientation. And if I had to um, rank some of these characteristics as being important, I'd certainly have this in the top three or four. Um, I think that at the end of the day, the job of the leader is to really clearly understand who our customer is and to have a detailed understanding um, of what the customer is actually wanting, a detailed understanding of what creates value for the customer and where their unmet needs currently are. And so innovative leaders, entrepreneurial leaders have this really strong focus on the customer and they understand that everything that we do as an organisation, every activity we take, every resource that we use, needs to be focused on producing a range of better products and services at a lower cost and price that enables us to provide more value for the customer. The more we're able to provide value to the customer, the more loyal the customer reigns to our organisation and the greater long-term benefit we're able to achieve. So this customer focus characteristic does not really complex, um, is not really in conflict with the profit motive because it's not saying that we don't care what the price is. It's just understanding that all profits derive from a satisfied customer. 
And so really understanding who our customer is, is going to be critical for our success. And it's really critical for that long-term pattern of innovation and entrepreneurship. Again, people like Steve Jobs and Elon Musk and Richard Branson seem to be better than most at understanding where customers are going. Rather than sort of tagging along behind, they're walking alongside the customer and have a really detailed understanding of what their, their patent passions are, what their um, behaviours are, and what's driving them forward as an organisation. And so this customer orientation is really critical to innovation and entrepreneurship leadership. A sixth characteristic is this focus on knowledge. Okay, so there's a tendency when we talk about senior managers to say that they've risen above, that they don't need to have um, the operational knowledge of what's happening within the organisation. But I actually think that's a bit of a furphy. Um, I actually think that, to be honest, a strong knowledge base, um, detailed knowledge of what's happening within your industry, within your company, with your staff at any one point in time is a real, really powerful force for in, ensuring that you as a manager, as you as a leader, can actually make better decisions. And so leaders who are good at driving innovation and entrepreneurship recognize the importance of knowledge. They know knowledge is a key resource that needs to be developed, um, that they need to build this stock of knowledge in themselves and with an organization. And they know that their organization and themselves need to learn. And so they build structures that facilitate the process of organizational learning so that we can go forward and progress as a business. So again, leaders who are good at innovation and entrepreneurship tend to have a strong appreciation of the power that knowledge brings to them as an individual and them as an organization and creates a culture in which organizational learning is not only important, it's highly valued. And the final of this first set of characteristics that we might talk about is that leaders have to be team builders. And this is really critical, in particular in the startup stage for organisations. In the startup phase, we know that resources are very limited, um, that we don't have a lot of cash and we don't have a lot of time available to us. And so leaders need to be very good at actually at working with and through people to achieve their ideas and their, to sort of achieve the innovative outcomes that they're actually wanting to do. We have to remember that many projects are large and complex and simply can't be managed by one person working on their own. So, you know, when Elon Musk says that he wants to provide a battery cell for the South Australian government and do it within 100 days, he knows he can't do that on his own. He knows he needs a team of people around him who are capable and able to work towards that objective so that the whole organisation succeeds. So innovative leaders know that teams are critical and that dynamic teams are critical. So a dynamic team is a team that in, in, internally continues to learn, but also from time to time brings new members in and also from time to time loses members, you know, that they may long, no longer be relevant to the team or they may go off and start up their own teams within the organisation. So again, if we're going to build a culture of innovation within the organisation, we need leaders who are very adept at actually building these team-based situations within the organisation. So that's the first seven core characteristics. What I'm going to do in the next section is talk about the remaining seven characteristics that we need in leaders to drive innovation and entrepreneurship.